Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from 2 Samuel chapter 7, and then we'll recap from chapters 1 through to 7. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning to give you thanks for yet another day of life. Lord, you have been with us right throughout our lives, even in the times that we didn't know. And we're just grateful that we actually can acknowledge now that you are with us. And that we're not just here by ourselves fending this whole entire life by ourselves. Even if our minds sometimes might try to convince us that we're by ourselves or we are alone in this. We're just grateful for your word also that reminds us that you are yet still in control of all things. And in this, this gives us hope. And we know that the enemy wants to rend this hope from us so that we are in despair of our own lives. But what we do instead, those who know you, is we look to this life as something that must happen because there is an element of this mortality that is needed, right? But at the end of the day, we hope in you because we know that this is not the be all end all we know that having finished this course of life and being found in the righteousness found in you lord jesus christ there is that promise from you who cannot lie of the eternal life to come in your eternal goodness this is why we do not lose hope that's why we don't lose heart but we sometimes do fall into that trap of the enemy when we lose focus on you and the cares of this life swallows us, swallow us up and this is why we ask and pray each and every morning dear lord that you continue to lead us by your holy spirit and instruct us by your holy word so we may know and do and accomplish fulfill your good, acceptable, perfect, and holy will. Because at the end of the day, 100% this life is set up to let us lose hope in you or to forsake you altogether. This is what this mortal life, this world, should I say, is set up to do. And we can see it's evident. But Lord, we want to be the ones that walk circumspectly, that we can be in this world, but not of it, right? As you have commanded us. I don't know how to do it by myself. I don't think anybody knows how to do it by themselves, but we know that you know how to do it and you can do it in us because again, you did it. You literally came in the likeness of us and did it all. It is possible. And not only that you did it, you did it perfectly you didn't sin at all not once so if you be perfect and have accomplished it have said that you will abide in us by your holy spirit to do this work in us all we need to do is petition you have confidence and faith in you believe on you that you will accomplish this in us lord again the word has said that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and everything else that we need will be added unto us. Keep us therefore in this precept, in seeking you and to love you, being obedient to you. And this again, we know will bring you joy. It will bring you pleasure for this sake were we created so heavenly father as we have your priest your word your record of your faithful ones of old and those who went against you of old and we have all this record for our learning 
for instruction in righteousness. We just pray as always that you allow us to learn, be edified from your word and not just reading it for reading's sake. Bring back to memory anything that needs to be discussed, anything that may be pressing on someone's heart, um, maybe not verbatim from this word that we're going to read from, but you can use your word in all aspects to bring us understanding in the things that we need enlightening or yeah yeah the things that we need to be enlightened so lord jesus we just pray and thank you for all things we ask each and every day that you continue to help us throughout all the tests and trials of life and bless us throughout it all dear lord as even as we were reading yesterday the, um, we see the ones who are blessed and the ones who are blessed normally don't go through the best things of this world because the world is against us but nevertheless we are counted blessed so help us dear lord to continue in your blessings and to be triumphant in these tests and trials so that we may again come out in the likeness of you who have who have done it all and we ask each and every day that you continue to use us in the lives of the youth to be a christ-like example of them i mean christ-like example to them so that they themselves may just be instilled with the world with the word and with the value of you lord jesus christ because this world and all that there is in it is out to take us out especially the youth so use us to be that light to guide them to steer them so that when they are of age themselves they may come unto you and be guided of you for themselves Continue to help us in love to be there for each other in the seasons and times that you have appointed and that you continue to promote, to nurture, to sustain and put your hedge of protection around marriages in the pursuit of godly marriages so that in all things we as mankind may glorify you, O Heavenly Father through and by and for and in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ yeshua hamashiach we pray amen all righty so second samuel chapter seven and it came to pass when the king sat in his house and the lord had given and the lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies that the king said unto nathan the prophet See now, I dwell in an house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye? not me and house of cedar now therefore so shalt thou say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts i took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over israel and i was with thee whithsoever thou wentest and have cut off all thine enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. 
Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before time. And as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men, and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, did, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. But thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come. And is this the manner of man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these great things, to make thy servant know them. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God. For there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem for a people to himself, and to make him a name, and to do for you great things and terrible for thy land, before thy people, which thou redeemest to thee from Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast confirmed to thyself thy people Israel to be a people unto thee forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. And now, O Lord God, the word that thou hast spoken concerning, concerning thy servant and concerning his house, establish it forever. And do as thou hast said, and let thy name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel, and let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed to thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house, therefore hath thy servant found in his heart to pray this prayer unto thee. And now, O Lord God, thou art that God, and thy words be true, and thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee, for thou for thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it. And with thy blessing, let the house of thy servant be blessed forever. Amen. That's a nice prayer, isn't it? A humble, humble, nice prayer. Notice that even in that, let's start from that chapter. Notice that David didn't even like say yes, see? 
this is why I am the chosen one, the anointed king now. It, it, but there was no, like in that prayer, there was no puffed upness in it. It was all the glory going back to our heavenly father. Right? The God of Israel. And um, yeah, just showing that he's a lowly servant and like, wow, you have really magnified your servant. And not only that, you blessed your servant and his seed forever. Right? To establish his kingdom forever. Right? I like that prayer. It's a nice prayer. All right, let's dive back into um, from chapter one, yeah? So, the second book here of Samuel started off with the death of Saul, right? Yeah, well, this first, but the, the 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 end. Sorry, the ending of um. The ending of the first book of Samuel spoke about the end, the death of Saul, and it just continued into the book of Second Samuel here, right? But you can imagine again the man of man that David was. Like when we think about um your enemies. Who or which one of us really and truly when we hear anything, not even death, you know, just anything ha bad happen to our enemies that we go out and mourn for them, right? None of, well, I, do I, I don't, I can't, con I don't, I can't off the top of my head consider any, anybody to be my enemy, but I'll just be playing like you won't, that won't be your first instinct to like mourn over the death of your enemy and we know that Saul was the enemy of David in his latter years right he started off he weren't his enemy we know when he was just a shepherd boy and he came and slew Goliath and all of that but he kind of started to turn when there was jealousy found in Saul um, one of the big tipping points was when the, the woman sang that song saying Saul slayed his thousands and David is 10,000. I think that triggered something amongst other things it looks like, right? Because Saul knew that this kingdom was going to be established through David, right? And I guess Saul wanted it to be kept in his lineage. He even spoke to Jonathan one time, like, don't you know, as long as David, the son of Jesse lives, like the kingdom won't be established by you, Jonathan. You could see that he was like, this is why I want to take him out. But, um, yeah, David um really lamented over Saul and Jonathan because we know that Jonathan was very close. He was very close with Jonathan. And we don't know how the latter part of their relationship was because they were quite close, right? But when it came to the point where Saul was literally wanting to kill David... I don't know, we don't really see much interaction between Jonathan and David based on what we read. So maybe they just had to, they had to be separated. And as I said, they were, they were very, very, very close based on all the scripture. Um, so I guess the people that were with David at the time would have been a bit confused because you can imagine like even some of the, um, the men that, fought with David or escaped with David and was with David whilst he was, um, what do you call it? Um, what's that word? An outcast. I can't remember the word that I'm looking for. Mm. Ostracized. Anyways, you know what I mean? When he was cast out, when he was, um, when he fled the kingdom, like when they must have seen David lamenting over Saul, well, I guess they could understand Jonathan, but Saul, like, you know, like, what's wrong with this guy? Wasn't this guy trying to kill him his whole latter part of his life? Like, but again, it shows us the manner and the character of the individuals that the Lord chooses. It's just not any random willy nilly, right? And it says, Saul started off good. He went astray. He didn't repent. The Lord took the kingdom away from him and his lineage, passed it on to another servant who was just a shepherd boy um, who um, trusted in the Lord very, very greatly because, again, remember when everybody wouldn't have 
gone up against Goliath. This little youth just went and said, oh, who is this? Pretty much like, who is this one who is talking against the God of Israel? Like, I'll go down and slay him. Right? <laughs> that confidence, you know, in the Lord and that. So, um, yeah. Chapter 1 pretty much covered like the lamentation of David for Saul and Jonathan. And again, reading it, you can see like this guy was, his heart was on a next level, right? Um, chapter 2. Alright, the heading of my Bible says he's made king over Judah. So you know there was always like this not split split but split nonetheless where judah was like its own camp and then israel was the rest of the tribes and that i think judah had judah benjamin and levi was normally under judah don't quote me on this right because i haven't done that research in a while but there was judah and there was israel right so in this one he was made king over judah right which again was his lineage because we know that david came from the line of judah right if you track back down from judah you can look in the you can look in either the account in first matthew you can see the lineage and you can see where david from the judah like abraham isaac jacob israel right judah and then you can track it right back down to king david <laughs> Which again, I always find so fascinating with this genealogy that you, that these individuals could literally track their heritage right back to Adam, right? That blows my mind. Like that would be obviously all of us did proceed forth from um, Adam and Eve, but just to know, like, oh yeah, that's my great great. Da, 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 da. You can imagine if we had those records now for even our generation, it would literally just dis, um, debunk any um, individuals with any form of doubt. Because if you can like vividly authenticate and track your genealogy right back to one person, and everybody can track it back to one person, then it would definitely just kill that whole Big Bang and all of that stuff. Um, because... It would make no sense which it doesn't make any sense but we revert back to this chapter um, yeah what was this oh this was the death of um, Ashael in chapter 2 also because again and you know what when I was reading this day um, the other day I was thinking like Although we read these things, we don't really appreciate the fact that the enemy was yet still operating. The devil, Satan, was still operating throughout all these things. Because although it's not vividly stated like, oh, and the devil did such and such, or Satan did this and that, or this evil spirit, or, or in some cases, because we know that he did mention that with Saul. But... I was just considering it because I'm like, there was infighting against the tribes and against the sects of um, David and Saul, etc. Which is, again, it's like you're fighting your own family, isn't it? Because it's one people. And I'm like, the, the enemy was, his hand was in play here, I believe. Although it doesn't specifically write it into it. But anytime there is conflu confusion or um, war or strife, obviously the Lord God Almighty is over all things that permits whatever he permits. But again, the enemy is not, like he doesn't just take time off, right? Even now, he's not just taking time off like, yeah, let me just wait till Christ come back or just wait until um, such and such a time. Like the enemy is out there trying to destroy us, right? And he's been trying to destroy mankind from the beginning of time right there's, there's that's that's his sole duty and purpose at the moment so yeah well, that thought just came to mind because i was reading 
and just seeing how Ashel, Ashel um, was trying to take out. Who, who was it? Was it Ashel? Yeah, Ashel was trying to take out Abner, right? And again, these were two individuals in of the, of different tribes and that, and they end up. It ended up that Ashel lost his life there, right? And we saw where Abner didn't want to like take him out. He didn't want to kill him, but um. Yeah, I guess he said it's my life or yours, and he decided to keep his life, and Ashel end up losing his life. And I think Ashel was the brother of Joab and Abishai. Yeah. So this was a time when the last little revolts between the um the individuals of the different tribes just before, um there was a treaty right because eventually um it ended up that there was a treaty there was a peace treaty between them the house of saul and the house of david um abner took hold took this um forward um and then we saw where abner went to was it Abner who went to David first or sent somebody to David? But anyway, again, this is was again just leading up to David being set king over Israel. And it was necessary that he was king over Israel because we know that his lineage led on to Christ. And Christ is king over not just Israel but everyone, right? And this was the... The promise that his seed shall be king over Israel, king over the world. So again, it just shows how the witness of Christ was again being set up in these days because everything, all the word had to line up. It had to make sense. It had to testify, right? So all of these things that is happening here, it always has to line up perfectly so that the prophecy of christ is without fault without any kind of um error or any kind of um what's the word i'm looking for let's just leave it at error right so yeah David mourneth for Abner. Oh. Oh. So again, sh there's a lot of telltale sign of the heart of David. Remember again, Abner wasn't one of his guys. It was he was aligned with Saul initially, although he was the one who took the initiative to say, you know what, let's Let's stop this war and make some treaty and all of that stuff. Right? We saw where Joab now, in his vice, in his own um, will, his own will, he went off of his emotion and he ended up beguiling Abner and killing him. Right? And David was... He made it very clear that he did have no form, way, shape, or form um, participation in that, right? Not only that, he mourned for Abner, right? And again, I just imagine in the people around David, they're like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> this, this is his enemy. Like, this was his enemy. This was the guy that fought alongside the guy what was trying to kill him all these years. Right, trying to take him out. Like, why is he weeping over him as someone who he loved? Right? Again, shows the character and the heart of David. I like these I like that these things were kept in the record also because when we hear, you know, people always say, Oh, David had a, a heart after the Lord's right. That the Lord said, I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Right? We just read that and like, yeah, okay. He must have had a good heart. But when we see these records, it literally kind of made that more clear. 
the character of this individual our forefather David so again Joab we saw that there's a little bit of vind um, vindictiveness a bit of vengeance in his heart right because again in theory he should have called that squat when it was war war is war you leave the things on the battlefield after the war you shouldn't be doing stuff like this right you shouldn't be beguiling people and taking them out and all of that stuff if it wasn't settled on the battlefield then and you, and you had a treaty then you just have to call it squits um even if it was your own brother right so what joab did here people might say but joab was just you know he was passionate because he lost his brother and all of that stuff and he just wanted to take out the guy who took out his brother but again there was there was there was i guess rules to warfare um it didn't really say it in in that much words but based on how the text is written and the reaction of david there was rules to warfare and david made it clear that look the blood of abner is not not going to be on my hands <laughs> right so yeah all right so what chapter four Ishbosheth is murdered. Oh, 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 again, the character of David. It's literally like the whole first few chapters literally was just building up to the character of David and just showing you his character in these events that happen. Because, again, Saul's son, Ishbosheth, right? Again, individuals took it upon themselves to go and murder him, right? From David's camp. And thinking that they did some justice there, like, all right, we'll take out the son of my, 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 um, my king's enemy. He must go and praise me now and maybe elevate me in the kingdom, whereas... They got the complete opposite like they were taken out like david took them out and somebody might say that sounds harsh like you're taking out your own man because they slew the son of your enemy but again there's rules to this thing based on how it's written right and david again being the just and righteous man that he is he showed that look I'm not going to do things unlawfully. I'm not going to do things of my own passion or emotion. And if anybody else would wanted, if anybody else, I don't want to say deserve to, if anybody else would, like, would have considered wanted to take out like the lineage of Saul and that, based on the interaction there, we would have, we in our own mortal self would consider, no, David had it the most right because he was the one being persecuted. But, Again, look at how David dealt with each and every one of the situation. First, when Saul died, right? Remember the servant that came and reported that servant got killed because they, I think they contributed in the death of Saul. And David, like, how oh, you're not fearful that you put your forth your hand against the Lord's anointed? That guy died, right? Again, when Joab took out Abner, right? It, it, it washed his hand of Joab and his action. And then again, when these servants came and took out Ishbosheth, again, thinking that they're doing some kind of justice in the eyes of the king, David, and again, they end up losing their lives. And somebody might hear all of this and say, but Jelani, this sounds so backward. Like, David is still, like, killing people and how is it just when it's that way and not the other way and all of that stuff like i said have a read through again how the scripture is written and the rules of warfare and what was right and what was wrong because in theory if if all right let's go back to the first example if the the servant that um, contributed to Saul's death didn't contribute to his death but actually just watched that he fell on his sword and died 
then and reported it to David, I don't believe he would have lost his life. Secondly, if the um if Abner and all right, so when Abner took out Ash Ashahel, right? If Joab had taken out Abner in the warfare, like whilst the war was going on, again, there would I don't believe there would be anything that came out of that because it was warfare at the time, right? But because after the warfare he did it, then it was wrong. Similarly, if these individuals here didn't take out um Ishbothes, Ishbothes, I can't say his name, Ishboth chef right they took it up on them own self like they didn't get no charge they didn't get any command nobody sent them the king didn't tell them right if they had just held a peace then they would be all right also so it does show you that the actions had repercussion for those individuals all right chapter five all right, so now in chapter 5, David is made king over all Israel. So notice before, it was just over the kingdom of Judah. But again, when the individual saw that, all right, the Lord indeed did is, has established throne in the hand of David, then all of them came together. And David was made king over all Israel. And again, I like how it set it up because again, I'm thinking... In hindsight and knowing how it progressed on to Christ and all of that and why it had to be so but again we're just grateful that we can have these records because it's records you know it's not a story per se it's his story it's this history um, it's literally a record of things that happened which testified again of the promise of God the salvation of God coming through the seed of man Right, um, oh, and he told you how long he reigned 40 years in total. And he said, I think six, seven, and seven years and six months over Judah, and then the rest over Israel and Judah. Right, so he reigned for a little while, and he started to reign when he was 30, which interestingly is a, a age in the Bible that, um, I don't know that that age is I don't know if that's the age when you're actually considered a, a man man right because obviously from when the 20s will grow facially and look like man and all of that stuff but it's interesting how David started to reign when he was in his 30s when when he was 30 and yet Jesus when he started doing all sorts he was about 30 also so it's just interesting that age right why not 100 why not 10 why not 15 why not 25 i don't know it just always interested me um and then zion is mentioned here the stronghold of zion which is the city of david oh and it made mention of david's um sons and his daughters not sorry, it's, it's children, should I say? And David had quite a few wives and concubines. He had quite a few there, right? Quite a few. We know of a few, like we hear of a few names, like the Abigail, the Michael, the Bathsheba. Um, yeah, those are the top ones off the top of my head. But there were others, right? And he had other sons and daughters, which were still of the lineage of David, which is interesting because I don't know, well, I don't think in the scripture would have much. Only one that I know of that is that was recorded, well, well I think all were recorded, but all that, the ones that we have were the lineage of David progressing through his son Solomon, King Solomon, and the lineage of David through Nathan, right? We have those two lineages. But he had other sons, right? We don't really have those accounts, like who what those ones led down to, like the genealogy beyond them. Well again, we have two, which is interesting. And like I said I like those style of stuff. Um oh one lesson that we learned from 
the chapter six was it chapter six already yesterday yeah right we cannot do what is right in our own eyes and think that it's it's fine right the the action of Uza, right that is what i wanted because when i was reading it it just always remind me like yo like god is god like if him said to don't do a thing it just depends on his mercies towards us whether we would get taken out or not right because again he's very just he's very righteous he's disciplined he's a disciplined god and again somebody might read this and say but I wasn't that a bit harsh though you know Uza when he, he stretched out his hand and touched the ark which he shouldn't have done because I don't believe he was of the priesthood or of a Levite he didn't say that because only the Levites and that were um, charged with the, the duties of the temple the priests we know they were the ones who were, were to move the, the, the ark and that right so Uza saw the, the, the calf stumbling right and put out his hand to reach for the ark and the lord was displeased and took him out right and even david it didn't say david reverently feared the lord no he said david was afraid because he's like whoa <laughs> yo this god that i serve don't play but um again somebody might look to that and say this is why i won't serve that god because what kind of god is that, 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 that? you know that saying that people always try to justify themselves and judge god right to say what kind of god would do this it's the same god that will show mercy unto mankind the, the many sins that we have committed in this life right he said he would have mercy upon who he would have mercy upon right you are here today with breath you are here in this video in this devotion this again is testament because in any in any one of our sins that were committed in our lives which is many we were the wages of that the, 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 the payment for that is death right but the mercies the gift of God ultimately leads to eternal life through Christ Jesus again this is why when I read these accounts although sometimes it's like whoa like I read it's like okay like all right he got took out right but i can still appreciate the mercies and the love long suffering and the love of god throughout the whole scripture but i don't discount that he's a just god he's a terrible god he's an awesome god he's a wonderful god we can't discredit his attributes for one or the other right he's all and all right <coughs> But um yeah, so yeah, David again got a, a, a appreciation of his God there with that action, and we also get appreciation of the God that we serve that He is a just God, and if He said not to do something, He expects you not to do it, right? Not that we lean on our own understanding or do what is right in our own eyes, thinking that ah, oh, but God would understand. Mm -mm, let's not play that game right so again david we know that the, the ark was left in the house of obed edom for a while the lord bless Obed edom house because where the presence of the lord is i guess there's always going to be not i guess there's always going to be um, blessings and um ultimately david after that whole hiccup with uza he went and fetched the ark again but this time look at the difference right he said every six how much paces and it was so that when they bear the ark of the lord had gone up six paces he sacrificed so literally every six pace them do a sacrifice because they're like yo just in case one of us sin let us let us just you know offer up a sacrifice to the lord so that must have been a lot. I don't know what the distance was, but even if it was just a mile or a few meters, that would be a lot of sacrifices, right? That that kind of let me chuckle when I read it. Like, yo, they were playing. Like, they must, they must make sure they say, they must appease. 
or should should I say that they were making known that they were reverent in what they were doing. Right? Um Yeah, and then that was celebration, obviously, because again, this kingdom established in the, the in the king that the Lord had appointed, the Lord's um ark being brought up to the stronghold in Zion. All of these things um were being established so you can imagine this was a time of great celebration michael saul's daughter the wife of david i'm not sure what her problem was here why she was so um like she despised david obviously david kind of was dancing you know in, in the getting at the dancing you know but for it, for it to say that she despised him in her heart, that's a strong word there. Right? She could it never just say she displeased. Because, um, you know, man and woman, sometimes you're not going to be always be pleased with certain things that your husband do and all of that stuff. But to say she despised him in his heart, again, I don't know what her problem was there. It didn't really go in depth with that. But, um, again, he, David was the Lord's anointed and we saw that her action against her husband caused it so that she died childless. Um, so, yeah. And then, yeah, what we read this morning. Yeah, just again showing the heart of David. David looking to what he has and is looking at what supposedly... It's obviously it's just from a man point of view, right? It's like, oh, I have all of this and then yet still the Lord is dwelling in tents and all of that stuff, right? Wanting to make a, a proper dwelling place for the Lord. But again, if we look at it now in hindsight, we're like, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof of the earth and they that dwell therein. Like, we know this. But again, I can understand. And again, to, for me, it again shows the character of david all of these chapters up to this point is just showing you the character the build-up of the character of this man who we know as king david right and we started off again just showing off his humility and that in that the lord said yeah you're not going to do it right he told nathan the prophet to just explain it to him like you are not going to do it but i'm going to set up your seed to do it right after you so yeah i'll leave it at that nice little recap of the chapters um i guess most of the lessons i learned from it was just again just the character of the of david here like just learning from the character of david how we op operate and again what would be pleasing in the sight of our god right if you learned anything else or if you want to share anything else you can always drop it in the comment section but i'll leave it at that today um pick up back at chapter eight tomorrow again leave what you want in the comment section um as much as the lord has led me taught me i kept me over the years i will answer them according to his word according to his principles according to his will be led by his holy spirit so have a blessed day, everyone and god's willing we'll catch up again tomorrow